Hi, I'm Rachel Rudolph, the Extension Vegetable Specialist at the University of Kentucky, and today we're going to talk about post-harvest of acorn squash. So acorn squash is a winter squash type, um, but it doesn't have the post-harvest uh, life of other, acorn, of other winter squash. And so um, we, part of this project that we have is looking at the storageability of this acorn squash over different time periods. So this project, these bins behind me, are contain five acorn squash or less uh, from the field. And so this started as a multi-state variety trial of 10 different acorn squash varieties. Um, we've got different colors, some white ones, some of the classic dark green. We've got some pretty speckled acorn squash, right? And so we evaluated them for field quality, so the yield in the field, right out of the field, um, and the quality. And we were looking for things that got cold would include heavy insect damage, um, animal feeding, of course, um, and soft spots or rotten spots, right? So all the, the, the five, and when we picked five squash from each plot, to be stored in these bins over the course of several weeks and weighed every two weeks. So we're monitoring how the weight decreases over time and also the quality. So the five squash that made it into these bins from each plot looked good initially from a, you know, just a visual assessment. We didn't cut into anything. And so they are being, every two weeks we're weighing them and we may have to cull, of those five, we may have to continue to cull as there will be soft spots. So acorn squash does not need to be cured like other winter squash. Um, it also doesn't have the, the life, the post-harvest life of other winter squash, as I said. And so maybe up to eight weeks you can store acorn squash. Um, and that, ideally, you would be storing it at 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. This room that I'm in is not you can probably tell it's not a walk-in cooler. It's not set at 50 or 55 degrees. It's currently 74.5. I've got a thermometer here. And so we're basically at your classic room temp, right? And so that's where these have been. We're approximately five weeks out from harvest. And um, that's where these have been stored. And so as I said, every two weeks we weigh them and we sort them again for quality and we may have to toss some out. So I'm kind of looking at these squash, evaluating them for, um, you know, their appearance. And this one, you can probably tell, uh, so a lot of acorn squash has that really nice orange spot on it, which, it, which can be a great indicator of time for harvest, right? This is like a maturity thing. But this spot, as you may be able to tell, hopefully in the video, is discolored and it's a little softer. It's getting a little soft. So I may be able to eat this today, no problem, but probably at the next weighing, we're gonna have a sunken spot and it may be moldy even, depending on you know how, how this progresses. So something to keep in mind for growers, um, harvesting and storing, right? You're gonna to have to continually reassess um, your squash in storage for any length of time. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about um, what this means, what these spots mean, what kind of disease they are, how to prevent it, and um, what to look for. Hi, I'm Nicole Goche, Extension Plant Pathologist here at the University of Kentucky. And um, I am working with Dr. Rachel Rudolph on um, her squash storage trial. So we're gonna talk today about post-harvest rots. And by post-harvest, that means anything after we harvest. So for example, in storage. And um, these rots that we're talking about today are fungal, but we can have rots caused by uh, water mold, oomycetes, for instance, pythium. Um, or true fungi. So um, what we have today is um, very clear rots on these uh, winter squash. And so what we had to do initially is determine what this was. So sometimes these rots um, will come in and sometimes these fungi come in 
um, from, from other things and the infection actually happens during, uh, during storage. But what we've got here, this is a fusarium rot and uh, fusarium is actually a plant disease that occurs out in the field. So here we're looking at an infection that occurred in the field, did not show symptoms yet, and then symptoms occurred later. So we call that latent infection, where infection uh, develops but symptoms did not occur yet. And so that's what's happening here. So as Dr. Rudolph is processing and weighing these squash uh, in this trial, uh, she's encountering, yes, these severe rots, but she's going through and she's taking a look at any discoloration, any soft spots. That's her way to predetermine uh, before we start getting this sporulation or all the spores being produced with this fusarium. So um, with winter squash, we have a lot of colors. We have a lot of color variations that occur. So how do you know which of these spots is actually disease and which ones are not? And we're looking at, at, at firmness. We're looking at um, whether this, um, this pathogen um, has started to rot and that would cause softness. So obviously uh, this, is, this is the point right before I'm unable to hold it. So it'll get so rotted that my fingers will actually go through. And the white you see here, this is sporulation or spores. And these spores are able to infect other, other um, fruit that are inside the bin. So we never want this to happen, but also we don't want these, these to make it to our customers' refrigerators. And so um, I've, I've selected a couple here that are actually soft. So you see this, my finger is really, I'm able to push my finger through this one. Um, so being, so as you, you call and as you monitor anything in storage to be able to really take a look at what's going on and to feel them and press them and to detect um, a diseased fruit before it begins to sporulate. So that's really the key. So I'm gonna cut this one in half here to so take a look at what's happening inside the fruit. So it's not just the softness, it's the decay. And um, so now we see we've got some brown, we've got some rotting here, um, and you'll see the initiation of that soft spot. Um, so this again is not something that you want to go to your customer. Um, so even though we didn't have the sporulation and the, the sliminess happening, we definitely have rot going on on the inside and that this is about a week before we start to see this type of spot. So it's very important to take a look at this. On this particular rot, this is a fusarium rot. A fusarium is a soil-borne pathogen. And by soil-borne, we mean that this fungus lives in the soil most or all of its life. It overwinters in soil and it, it pretty much will uh, survive in the soil. Um, these fruit were on, at ground level, and that's typically when we see a soil-borne pathogen moving its way up into the canopy, it's, because, it's usually right there at the soil level. So soil-borne pathogens, um, they'll start out at very low levels. And as there is a host for them, each year we, we increase the amount of that that fungus or that inoculum in the ground. So that's why we're always encouraging um, crop rotations into um, a crop that is not susceptible to certain uh, pathogens. And that's really critical because in the field that, um, that these squash came out of, we know there's a history of fusarium, um, fusarium rot. And so this is pretty much expected here, um, in fact, we're at the research farm, as you can probably tell, and at the research farm, we do things that a, that a, um, a conventional grower would not do, and that's usually um, so, so, um, introduce very high, uh, high um, risk situations so that we can better evaluate as part of our experimentation. But fusarium, along with the other, uh, other soil-borne pathogens, really critical to understand um, what the host range is 
on each of the pathogens. Um, so we start with a diagnosis from our plant disease diagnostic lab. Contact your county extension office and have a confirmation of what's going on here because this pathogen will be here next year. In fact, it'll be here in higher numbers. So once we have a confirmation, we are gonna rotate a minimum of three years. I prefer to see five years into crops that are not susceptible to whatever the disease is. And this one again is Fusarium. And so that's one way to break that cycle. Looking at resistant cultivars, so in your seed catalog, resistant cultivars are listed. Is there a resistant cultivar that you can rot rotate into? And then finally, for a conventional grower to use fungicides as preventatives. So really important um, that we use fungicides to prevent infection in the first place fungicides will not be curative. Once, once disease occurs, we cannot reverse it. So we don't cure plant diseases, we prevent. So if there is a history of disease in a field, and if you are going to take the risk to use fungicides earlier in the season, in this case, just as fruit begin to develop, so you can assure that you're not gonna have that, um, that initial infection occurring.